Hey guys, I want to show you how to use a gyroscope to make the EV3 robot go perfectly straight. And it doesn't matter uh, how fast or how slow the EV3 is going. And what I've got here is a basic bot that has two motors, a right and a left motor, and then each motor just has the one wheel hooked to it. We have the brain, and then the only other thing we need is the gyroscope. And gyroscopes, and mounted in this orientation, by the way. So gyroscopes are typically used to um, make very accurate turns. But with that power, you can also use them to make sure that you're not making any turns. And that's kind of the premise here of um, this solution. So, um, so I'm going to take this out of here. And the rest of this, we're just going to be using... Uh, a piece of paper and this pencil to talk about how to use the gyro to make the robot go perfectly straight. And I figured I'll do this instead of showing you the software program, um, the EV3 program, because this is very basic and uh, you guys can implement it in different ways. But all you need is the EV3 brick, two motors, each one has a wheel hook to it, and then the gyroscope. Uh, so what we do is this process uses a loop. So we run through a loop and we are constantly checking what the reading of the gyroscope is. Okay, but before, the, before we start the loop, we, do, um, we reset the gyroscope. It has to be set to zero. And then uh, all of the further... Uh, measurements are in regard to zero. So if this is the gyroscope, this black pencil, if we turn, rotate the gyroscope this way, which means the robot has, roted, has rotated to the right 90 degrees, okay, and then if we rotate it back, um, now the gyroscope reads zero again. And then likewise, if we rotate it this way, uh, it means that the robot and the gyroscope have rotated negative 90 degrees. Okay, so put it back to the center. Uh, and like I said, this doesn't matter if you're going real slow or real fast. The gyroscope will keep the robot going perfectly uh, straight. So uh, what we do is we set the motors to any speed you want. And so, for example, let's say 20. Okay. So the robot, um, both motors, and I use uh, independent controls for each motor. So you could e either use, uh, in the EV3 software, the large motor, or I use the unregulated motor. Um, and uh, so what we do is we put 20 power to each motor, and we come into our loop. And we just say at the beginning, is the gyroscope less than zero? Uh, or we say, I'm sorry, does the gyroscope not equal zero? Because if the gyroscope equals zero, then that means that we're already going perfectly straight forward. So what happens if, uh, if the gyroscope does not equal zero, then we need to go up on a different loop and we need to do something. But if the gyroscope does equal zero, then we go down here and we go to the end and we restart our loop again. Um, I guess this would be back like this. Because, again, if the gyroscope is reading zero and our robot is going, is traveling along forward, then that means it's going perfectly forward, perfectly straight. Okay, but so if the gyroscope is not reading zero, then we need to correct. And we make corrections by adjusting uh, the power to each wheel. So, for example, if we're going forward and our gyroscope, so we just keep going through this loop. We just keep checking the value of the gyroscope. So if it's negative one, that means we're headed off to the left a little bit. So what we need to do is put more power to the left motor and less power to the right motor. Because if we put more power to the left motor, that will correct us like this and it will bring us back towards zero. And so that's the premise of it. That's all that there really is to this. But it works incredibly reliably, and it's incredibly accurate because of the sample rate that the 
the brick reads the reading from the gyroscope very fast. And I think it's a thousand times per second, one kilohertz sample rate. So we said if the gyroscope is perfectly zero, or is zero, that means the robot's going perfectly straight. So don't do anything. Don't change the motor speed. So there's still 20 to each motor. But we come up here if the gyroscope does not equal zero. And then we have to, um, we measure the gyroscope. And if it's more than uh, zero, we come up one path. And if it's less than zero, then we come down to a different path. And what do we do on these paths? Well, we add uh, our error correction to the left motor and we subtract it to the right, and that would make it come back this way. But if we're over here, then we need to take power away from the left motor and we need to add it to the right motor, and that brings us back this way. So um, all we do, all I did, uh, I used a value of 1, so my error correction is 1. So one of the motors would get 21 power, and then the other mo uh, motor would get 19 power, and that would correct the heading so that the gyroscope heads back towards 0. And then it's just the opposite down here. One of the motors gets 19, uh, and, the, and the other motor gets 21, and that just corrects it back the opposite way. Uh, and then they just come back in, and then the, root, the loop just repeats. And that is all that there is to it. And uh, so again, to summarize, we put uh, 20, we reset the gyroscope to zero, we put uh, 20 to each motor, and then we read the gyroscope. And is it zero? If it is, then you don't do anything, and you just start over. But if it's not zero, then we need to correct. So we come up this path. Now, are we less than zero, or are we more than zero? And depending on the answer to that, we come up and we add more power to one motor, less power to the other motor, so that it, you know, it changes the heading of the gyroscope. And the goal of coming through either of these paths is to put more, the goal is to get the gyroscope back to zero. And you do that by putting a little bit more power to one motor and less to the other. Um, or the opposite, you put a little bit less motor to one and more to the other, a little bit more, uh, less power. So that's all that there is to it. Uh, it runs incredibly accurately. It's a, it's a real neat solution and it's a different way of thinking about using the gyroscope instead of using it to, uh, to, con to do very accurate turns. We're making, we're using it to make sure we don't turn at all. So, uh, I just wanted to show that I'll provide a link to my to the EV3 program in case you guys want to still want to see that. But I would encourage you to not look at it. I would encourage you to draw out with a piece of paper and a pencil first um, your own implementation of this. Uh, because it's important to try things first on a just sketch it out. And that's part of the one of the engineering principles or fundamentals. Um, and it's also important to make your own mistakes um, and learn from them. Uh, making mistakes is very important, and it's a critical part of getting better at whatever it is that you're trying to do. So um, I hope that helps, and I hope that helps uh, you guys go faster with your robots, uh, or I should say more accurately with your robots in the direction that you're trying to head. So um, let me know in the comments below if you have any feedback or if there's anything else I can do to help, and I'll provide a link to... Uh, to my actual program. Thanks guys, bye bye.